Jesus, there you go. So what's going on, man? <laughs> not much, not much. What's going uh, on just, with you? you know, working. Uh, I actually, I'm actually, I want to ask you something real quick. So, do you? How do you yeah. look at money? Like, do you look at like at, like investing in other things, or are you really big into that, or or how do you deal with that? Honestly, I I just started. Yeah. Can you hear me? Is that okay? Honestly, um, my brother the in the Marines, he's the one that got me sort of hooked on mm -hmm. Robinhood. So the app where you could buy stocks and everything else and just put money in, see where it goes from there. You could trade if you want to, right. sell it, and things like that. So utilizing that app has really sort of helped me sort of understand like what these stocks are about, uh, what it means to invest, what's long-term, short-term. It also allows you to do like cryptocurrency as well. So if you want to invest in that, but for me, honestly, like I'm really big on finance management. Like I got to make sure like I'm not just splurging on Amazon every weekend is a fucking delivery coming through like and buying nonsense shit, you know what I'm saying? But I, I do love gadgets like technology. So if I see something that I like, I'll, I'll, I'll buy into that or whatnot. But for the most part. I'll put money into the Robin Hood. You know, I try to save up, and that way, if I want to take a trip or something later on, or do something, because I really cut back on the weekend shenanigans of going out and stuff like that. Most of the time now is, if I do go out, it's for dinner, and it's very rare. Like we'll probably go maybe twice a month out to eat. You know what I'm saying? But if I do go out, is to a friend's house, we barbecue, or mm -hmm. something like that. But for the most part, I I I do try to save. But I also like to invest if I can. But I do like to travel mm -hmm. if I could. So I'll I'll, inv I'll try to put my money down to that. But I'll be honest. I used to be big on Amazon, man. Like I was buying. <laughs> I was one of those housewives that that were just buying shit on Amazon, waiting for the deliveries to come through or whatnot. But for the most part, I I pretty much cut back on mm -hmm. all that stuff. But why why you why finance? What, what brought that uh, up? So why I'm finance? looking. I'm you know, talking to another friend and. We started talking about option trading, uh, and I'm actually like reading a book okay. right now about Airbnb. So I'm looking at going into Airbnbs and stuff like that. So that's why it's just a question because it's something that I've I've actually I'm I've gotten really I've I've want to make sure that I I'm financially smart literate. I think that's a big deal. So like you know, right. and sometimes when I talk to people, and, and I'm I'm discussing how I look at things, or you know, even being a realtor, like I tell people, like I I personally I don't say this as advice. I'm not one of those people, but I sit there and say like I personally have no plan on paying off my mortgage early. I don't see the point in doing it. And so I think it's a waste of time or not a waste of time. I just don't think it's really worth what you're, what you're looking for long term of the way money works. So interesting. But why do you say that? Why you don't want to, cause that normally homeowners, that's what yep. they look at is let me get rid of this payment. Like yeah. I want to get it out of the way because housing is a good investment. I mean, this is my first home. I never seek to buy homes when I was in the military. Mm -hmm. I should have, but I just, couldn't deal with the right. constant moving. You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't want to be like, okay, my property still doesn't sell, but I still got to maintain it. Now I got to hire somebody to maintain it. But now that I'm out and everything else is like me and my brother will think about like, you know, let's do an Airbnb or let's look to buy another property so that we could mm -hmm. rent that one out. Let the primary one, you know, renters pay it off and stuff like that. But that's interesting. Why you say that? Why you don't want to pay uh, so, the mortgage? Yeah, the reason right why away? I don't do it and the reason why I don't like I don't do it is because if you look at the value of the dollar since like the 1970s, they took us off the gold standard. Right. So the value of the dollar has been going right. down since the 1970s. And so the way I look at it is if you buy a house for two hundred thousand dollars, it's not worth two hundred thousand dollars in 30 years. Right. And even if you have interest, it's still let's say it's one hundred thousand or like what a fifty thousand or whatever crazy stuff. It still doesn't equal that within the 30 years. Like, I don't understand the point of paying somebody early because the only one you're helping is the bank. You're not helping yourself because that that actually doesn't equate to like the full amount. Right. And so what they try to do is you say, hey, if you paid off five years earlier, whatever, you save this much and and that percentage. But you're not really saving that shit because it's over 30 years. So you're not really like it's you're just getting a big number, but it's not how it goes. It's throughout the years or whatever. So I personally don't see the point in paying it off early. Because if you look at 30 years from now, $200,000 does not equate $200,000 in 30 years. It's way lower than that, right? Or it's right. way higher than that because inflation is an annual percent of 3%. And, you know, you have those – look at those numbers. I don't understand why you pay it off early. I, I just truly don't. Now, I, I know when people are looking at it from a payment standpoint, but when I'm looking at things from a money standpoint, um, like I, I, I'm going to get solar, right? So I, I decided I'm going to get solar panels on my house. 
and I was talking to the guy. And so we we're talking about it and I was like, Hey, you know, we'll, we'll do this for 25 years at 2.99%. Right. And so we're talking about that point. And I was like, well, because I'm able to save so much money on this, like this new solar panel, I budget for $200 and my bill is going to get down to like 125 with solar. Right. Well, I can take that $75. Right. And if I invest it into a Schwab index fund with a like 16% return rate every year, I will make over a hundred thousand dollars in 25 in 20 years. Now, if I bump that up to 20%, I will make over $150,000 off of $75 for 20 years. So that's why I'm like, and then at that point, it's 30, it's like, let's say it's 30,000 to put solar panels on. And let's say it's 50,000 with interest or whatever. I'm still going to make triple what I'm going to make in there. And then whatever I took that loan out, it doesn't matter because it still is inflation. So it doesn't really equal 50,000 no more. So by you doing that, are you looking to stay in that no. same house or are you going to look to want to buy more property yeah. and rent it out? So I'm looking at it sitting there saying we got 10 more years, we're moving out, and that's an investment property. So I'm also looking at that saying, okay, we're getting okay. solar panels. This is an investment property. We'll be able to do that too as well. So, I mean, it, it's it's the whole nine because I was talking to that guy and he's like, okay. And I'm like, nope, because I'm looking at this from 10 years out. I'm going to have a renter pay for this one now. I'm going to have yeah. them finish paying it off. But at the same time frame, paying off, you know what I mean? Like even if I was paying it off. Again, 25 years, it feels like a lot of money, but it's really not if you think about it, especially when you look at the value of the dollar going down. So like, that's why I personally don't really recommend it. Like take out a loan, like my, my investment property. I take it out. The bank's taking the hit for that. They're gonna, I got to pay them over 20 years. Okay, cool. Like I don't care why it doesn't – I don't think it benefits me at all really to – paid off early because of the like they said the value of the dollar is going to go down so the longer i don't pay it yeah. the longer i take to pay them back they're the ones who take the hit all the time not me i'm the actual who just has an asset that in creates in value so i don't really see the point in paying off early see and that's interesting that you say that because i don't think many homeowners have an outlook like that because to me honestly and and i partly do it now is i see it as another what's the liability you know what i'm saying so like yeah, I mean, but I see it as another thing mm. that's taking my, my check on the first of the month. You know what I'm saying? I don't see it as it's okay if I have to wait 10 years to pay this off or whatever because now I could think, like you said, I could do A, B, and C to make revenue, and then I could still use the property to make right. revenue as well. A lot of homeowners just see it like, fuck, man, I can't wait to pay off this house. That way I don't have to worry about paying the mortgage or anything like that. I don't think many homeowners have the smarts or do the research to – want to see outside of it like what else can i do to bring revenue besides you know just complaining that i gotta fucking pay this much right. in the mortgage and stuff like that but i do agree with you in the <clears> sense <throat> that i feel renovation to a home is is the best thing i think any homeowner could do because for example my brother did what you're talking about doing with the solars it increased his property value you know what I'm saying? So he, let's say in Staten Island, he bought a house for a hundred thousand. Now with the solar panel and he did a little renovations here and there, the property value just went up to let's say hundred fifty thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? So it's smart to do it. I just don't think a lot of people have the the conscious aspect to want to do that because they just don't know much. I think they just see it as oh, it's my home and hopefully I could make mm -hmm. something from it from there. I don't think a lot of people got the smart because I sure don't. I look at it, my brother's like, yo, the first of the month is how much it's going to be. And I'm like, fuck, <laughs> you know, another fucking bill yeah. I got to worry about on top of all the other shit that I got to pay off. But but that's why I like started. I like that I started doing mm -hmm. stocks because it does help to increase money when you're not really having to work right. hard for it. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but at the same token, you have to do your research on what you're investing in. You can't just go off name brand. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't just be like, oh, Disney, let me invest in Disney because I think they're just going to mm -hmm. make a lot of money. Or let me invest in Netflix because everybody watches Netflix. No. Unfortunately, the stock, you know, fluctuates. It goes up and down. Sometimes you'll make $50 extra on the $100 you put in, or sometimes you're going to lose $50 because that's just the way it works. But I like that because I feel like I got so much time on my hand that I could do that research. Yeah. I could look to see what's going on. But again homeowners to me i feel like they become one dimensional and they don't think outside of it me and my brother have big ideas for the house like i said we want to either rent it out maybe do airbnb florida is really big mm -hmm. on airbnb we're in a prime location we're right next to the airport disney's right there 
So I feel like if we decided to do more property and invest in more property, like this house that we got now would be a big seller for us. And now we just did renovations. We did tiles on the floor. We're going to change the staircase. You know, we changed fans. We changed window. Like, you know, we did stuff to mm. it little by little because I feel like with that will increase the property value. So we pay two something. I'm hoping like the next five, six years that we keep investing, investing it. Hopefully, depending on the property value outside of us as well, hopefully we get an investment, come back 300000 or something like that. You know, we profit 100 and something thousand from what we paid off on mm -hmm. it, you know? But, that, but that's interesting that you say that because I don't think a lot of homeowners well, think that I, way. I'm honestly. looking at it all the time of how do I don't, how do I, like, how can I not pay taxes? You know, one thing I'm looking at right now is like, and, I, and I'm talking about it where, you know, I'm actually going to invest more into the stock market and have more assets and not just the stock market because I'm going to diversify, but also instead of paying taxes on that one, I'm actually going to take out a line of credit from the bank from those assets, still keep my assets that are still going to keep making money for me. And so it right. cre appreciate with value and stuff like that, but also take out a line of credit from the bank and don't pay taxes on that line of credit because it's not, it's by the bank and, and looking at those ways of how do you, how do you start being smart with money? Um, you know, reading books, reading those different things, we start looking at that sit there and saying, okay, cool. One thing, other thing is like kind of like life insurance policies, how you can actually borrow money from your life insurance policy and pay yourself back with interest. You're basically your own bank and that shit's legal. Like it, it's, yeah. you start learning some things and you're like, it, it's one of the ones where it's like, that's, I think that's how the wealthy stay rich, right? It's not because they're like horrible people or this, like that. they're just smart and they figured it out. And they might have someone who told them and the next yeah. generation picked it up and went somewhere else with it. But I mean, you know, you, th you think about the point where I've been poor enough, you know, what we talked about before, where I've lived off my star card. Now it's a point where we have the, the potential to be our own bank is fucking crazy. It's like, it's like, that's the American dream, right? Where you can literally be rags to riches, but it's information. And so I think like when a lot of people don't look right. at it, it's like, you know, that's fine. But it's like, what are you spending your time doing? One thing that I'm doing is like, okay, I'm, I'm reading a book right now about Airbnbs, um, looking at a, a stock market book, right? Also looking at like, hey, can I get some self-improvements where if you're really trying to improve yourself, you're going to look back in five years and be like, I know a lot more than I did and I can use that information to put us in a better position. Yeah, because I honestly, it's like, even now with credit cards, like I'm so glad, I should have probably done it earlier. <clears throat> I used to have at least honestly like six seven mm -hmm. credit cards when i first started out 18 years old you know i'm saying like they will send me the sheet like yo your credit balance is this you know you you could make mad money you got good credit score because i never had that one after another one after another because they kept increasing the credit limit it kept going up you've been paying you on time so let's do this but dude i'm so glad that i just consolidated all that shit now it's like mm -hmm. i'm done you know what i'm saying like i have maybe one now that i use here and there but that's another thing financially thinking. I never thought that it could actually mount up. You know what I'm saying? Because all you see is like the credit limits going mm -hmm. up, the credit limit is rising and everything else. So you just feel like, dude, I could just spend more and everything. But then you look at it, uh, the the long term, you're fucking in so, debt, man. You're thousands and thousands in debt trying to pay that shit crazy? back. I actually, uh, I'm yeah. trying to get all my bills and use only a credit card. I don't, I'm trying not to use any cash at all. So I'm actually doing the opposite. I'm putting all my money on a credit card at all times. Gas. I'm, if I could do my mortgage, I'd do that on there too, right? So the actual point of view is like the reason why I, I like to do it that way is because if it's if it's a credit card, it's the bank's money. So if somebody ever does anything wrong against you, you put a claim against it and the bank will go after them. But if it's your own personal money, they, they may or may not go after it, but they may not be able to recover it, right? Because it's your money. And so you're using their money. The only thing that's kind of like you have to sit there and say is like, that's cool, but, but you have to be disciplined. We're not going out like we're still every Friday. The wife's going through and sitting there saying we pay this. Okay. What's our budget? Okay. We have a budget for gas for this much. Are we going over it? You know, so it's not like we're just kind of just like swiping, but what I do is I'll take my whole paycheck and I'll throw it in there. And my credit has gone through the fucking roof. Like it is stupid how much my credit has gone up within one month of like I did it one time, how much it went up. It keeps going up where you know, it's because I, I appear to seem like I'm spending a lot of money, but I'm paying it down, but I'm just throwing my paycheck in there. So it drops it down dramatically every time. So that's something else that we're doing new as to as well is kind of using the credit card, but 
being disciplined, right? We have one credit card and we're being disciplined with it where we're sitting there saying, okay, how much should we spend on gas? How much should we spend on utility bills? How much are we spending? Okay, cool. We're in line. Oh, we're a little bit budget over. We went out to eat one more time. That cost us $16 over. Okay. You know what I mean? So, the, you know, there's some things with that, but there's also things where it's like, hey, man, like you, you don't have, like what I'm saying is like, there, there's some people out there will tell you, don't do it this way. Like save your money. Don't do this. Don't try that. And it's like, that's cool, I guess. But there's other ways to use things to actually help you make money and to like make assets and profit and stuff like that. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, because even now, like most credit cards, you could start the cash back yeah. rewards. You know what I'm saying? So the more you're investing or utilizing that credit card, you're getting a return. You're getting a refund in return. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So as you can, and that, I'll be honest with you, I don't put my paycheck into mine, but I do use mine mm -hmm. more often. It's only one, and I've learned right, because right. Of, of dealing with the debt that I was in with the previous ones. But this one, gas, I'll put it on there because guess what? 5% cash back, boom, goes back into my card. I'll use it to, to buy groceries sometimes. Cash back goes back into my car. And the good thing about it is that mine's is Discover. So on the app, it will also show you like what places will give you the most cash back if you spend it on there. Walmart, Walgreens. You know, if you go to this gas station, Shell, whatever. Yeah, I might be spending $50 here and there to fill up my car. But then in return, I'm getting a certain, I'm getting that five percent of that fifty dollars back into my car. Prime example, and this it might not be major. So I went to buy a gift on Amazon. Um, I think it was for a, a birthday or something like that. I went to buy a gift, and because I had so many reward points, I didn't even need to charge my card because the reward points paid for the gift. So basically, my card went through and everything got charged, but zero money was taken out because the reward points that I kept using to return to my card basically paid that gift off for me. So and and the thing is, a lot of these young kids, they don't this younger generation don't understand that. And it took I, I mean, let's be honest, for me, it took me time to under comprehend this. You know what I'm saying? Because, again, 18 years old, that first credit card letter came to my house. I was like, hell yeah, sign me up. You know what I'm saying? This is my credit limit. You'll be doing this. As, as long as you were smart about it and you kept paying on time where you're not a delinquent payer, you cre my credit limit was going from $2,000 to $5,000, $5,000 to $10,000. And of course, I'm like, hell yeah. You know, I'm in my 20s. I want to spend. I want to fly here. I want to fly there. I don't need to worry as long as I pay my shit on time. But it took me a while to understand that stuff because sometimes you can go crazy with it. You're swiping for fucking every little thing. And the next thing you know, you're like, yo, how am I going to pay this bill? Because now you just accumulated six credit cards and you got to pay yeah. six bills for six credit cards. So it took me a while to understand that, but I'm glad. Th again, those to me are life lessons mm -hmm. I learned from that. But like you, like I'm trying to invest more. I'm trying to I'm trying to let my money build for itself right. if I can. You know, this is my first home. I'm grateful to be in a, a homeowner and everything else because I now could see different outlooks of what this investment can do for me. Same thing with my credit card. I'm down to one. Even though my credit score is a little shaky now just because of the debt consolidation I'm doing, but this one credit card is teaching me manage it right. Like make sure you're paying on time and look through it. Make sure your your credit limit, you're not over exceeding it and, and things like that. But this younger generation is like, I don't think they'll understand it till they experience it a couple of years in their lives until they realize, yo, this is too much. Because if you ask if you ask 18, 19 year old right now, what's the first thing you're going to do? Once you like in, you know, go off to college, get your first job or anything like that, most of them don't even yeah. know what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? Either get a car or they're going to buy the new PS6 or some shit like that. You know, they don't really have the smarts and understanding to know what to do with it. Which is well, crazy. it's it's like, but, you know, first of all, I, I can imagine you now in Florida and you're like, hey, let's go here. And you're like, no, discovers Discover doesn't give me points. I can just see you looking at your app being like, I can't go here no more. Like, <laughs> just it's over with. <laughs> I'm a I'm a picky yeah. eater now. Just like gang, I'm a picky like you're just not doing gang shit. Like you don't take it, man. I don't get no points here. I gotta go. <laughs> Yo, yeah, I, you don't take it. I'm not going. Somebody's there. like support. <laughs> no, but I do guess. I do. I do guess cents to the dollar though. So even though it's not a full dollar in it, I'll get like maybe sixty cents from this. So I'm okay with that. It's have all you, roundups. Uh, roundups. Have you ever looked up through. a compound interest calculator? Do you know what compound interest is? 
Okay, so like no. compound interest is like if you're investing and you have compound interest, based off your percentage of your return rate, right? So your ROI, return on investment, whatever your return rate for that for that okay. year is or, or how you do it, it can compound how many years. So it's like, I think it's 72 divided by the, the interest rate will tell you how many years. So if you have 15, if you have 20% return rate yearly or a return rate of 50, uh, 20%, it will take three and a half years or so for it to compound interest, which is to double for free, right? Pretty much. So if you have $40,000 okay. and three and a half years with 20% return rate, and you started out with 40, you will now have 80, right? So there's a calculator. It's called like investor.gov. So it's a government website. So, but you can get there, there anywhere. Okay. If you take $3,000, yeah. I'm doing it right now while I'm on here with you, $3,000. And we don't ever put any more money in there for the next 30 years, right? I feel like I need to take on my notepad and pencil and start writing this shit. We're going to say a, a return rate of 15%, <laughs> right? We're getting educated, people. We're getting education uh, right now. Let's say you do that, right? <laughs> For fifteen at a fifteen percent yeah. for thirty years, how much do you think that three thousand dollars will make? A hundred and ninety eight thousand dollars. With just three thousand alone, not Never again. increasing, not now, anything else. How much do you think it'll go up if you were to turn if you were to do sixty years? Thirty more years Oof. on top of that. Million? Million? Half a million. Thirteen million dollars. Now, oh, the, the reason why I'm bringing shit. this up is my goal, mm -hmm. and this is my goal, is once I have grandkids, now I'm 36, my daughter is, I have a 12-year-old and I have an 8-year-old, so there's no, there, the grandkids are not even in the option, but I'm thinking about grandkids already. Right. If I have a grandkid and I put $3,000, they will be a 13 millionaire, a 13 times over millionaire by the time they're 60 and they retire. Right. For $3,000, wow. that's it, right? So that's what I'm saying. Like, that, you know, yeah. you need to learn those things because there's a point where even my daughter will sit there and say, I'll put this is some. Is that a monthly? Is that a monthly in, investment? One time, $3,000 and I'm done. Oh, and just let it let the compound yep. interest build right. on that. And so that's what I'm saying. You. Imagine if you have a brand new grandkid or let's say you have a brand new kid or whatever. And you take $3,000 because it's that's a lot, but not a lot. Right. It's, it's you could you could see that right. and you were to put it into a stock return that's 15 percent that's that's not that hard now let's do that at 20 percent right so 60 years three thousand dollars 60 years at 20 percent that is 169 million dollars so what I, and, and, wow. and you can see the numbers too and I, that's what like I, me and my wife were talking about and i was showing her the numbers i was like this is what i want to do for our grandkids this shit right here so Let's say let's say at sixteen I do ten thousand dollars, right? So I do yeah. ten thousand. That's a that's a at sixteen years old they turn that and let's say they do it for we do it for forty five years. And I say at fifteen percent, because I think that's it's easy to make that fifteen percent if you look at the right stocks. Twenty you can get twenty two. But fifteen fifteen percent right. for forty five years, they will be five point three million dollars. Right? So if you have a 16 year old and you put ten thousand dollars into their into a stock for them and just never touch it again, you're looking at a five year uh, a, a five time over millionaire by the time they retire. And so like what I look at that is if I look at my kids and I sit there and say like, hey man, if you can go out there and change the world, and you can go out there and be a good person and you can really worry about it, you don't have to worry about retirement. I got you. We we took we were smart about it. You're you're good to go. Just go out and do real in the world. And by the way, your kids are going to be even more richer than you are. We're looking at like, you know, like it's, it's that idea of you could look at people and sit there saying you're going to be a millionaire. Like you're a millionaire. It just needs to take time. That's it. Right. So those are some of those things. And so that's why I'm saying like, you, you know, when you start learning about compound interest, you're like, that's what you have to do. You have to put money in there and it's time. Most importantly, it's time because if you don't have that much time, then you got to put more money up front. Right. So, so we can compound interest. But if you have right. time, which a lot of people do, right? If you're 30, I'm 30. Shit, 30 more years, I can make some more money. Um, right. You know, and so it's those things when it comes to the financial portion about it, it's like you can make some serious fucking money here and it will compound interest for you. So the point where we're looking at our kids and sitting there saying like you don't have like you're having problems, but we can make sure you don't have problems in the future because we can teach you about money. And then if you were to put money in, you know, like, you know, they always say that if you put a 200 bucks in or whatever, you could be this much because of compound interest alone. 
it I think that's the most craziest part ever. Uh, but I think it's also dependent on, like you said, what stock you really got to research. Not you really, really man. Know it's not that hard. I'm telling you, man, if you look up index funds, because index funds have an expense uh-huh. ratio of like 0.01 or something like that, or 0.01. And if you look at, like, I read this book called Unshakable by Tony Robbins, and he goes the difference between mutual funds and index funds. Mutual funds, everyone knows and they use. However, you have to look at the expense ratio. Normally, it's two point something percent. It doesn't seem a lot, but they're saying that over the time that can eat up half of your your returns. So if you made two hundred thousand yeah. dollars, that could eat up fifty percent of that shit because of expenses of calculators, right. pencils, coffee cups for their conference, and there's also hidden fees. Mm-hmm. Well, not hidden fees. There's also fees when they trade, right? And so the big difference between an index fund is, like, if one of my index funds I have, boom, it's there. They're not trading that shit. They just have more. They just they they don't really trade it. They don't not trying to make some money. They just have it there and they just let it grow. The reason why that's something to be yeah. noticed is because they're not sp- they're not selling stock, and they're not buying stock, so there's no fees. And then also they they don't manage it, so they're just doing this and they're letting it go, so it has a, a lower expense ratio. At that point, man, you start looking at index fund, and you start they've been around since the seventies. That's what I'm telling you. I, I can tell you right now, there's there's some right now that you can get nineteen percent for ten years easily. That's not that hard. It's just like, again, it's information about these things of where you get them. Just look up an index fund and look at a year return rate of uh, that. Look up a Vanguard index fund and you're looking at 19, 16, 20% return rates easily for tons of them. You know, I mean, shit like that. And some of them, like the minimum amount is like 3000 initial investment. Imagine you had $3,000. Yeah. And again, at 30 years, at 60 years. You know, that's a real quick, easy way of doing it where you can look at if you're going to have a grandkid in nine months, you can start like, can you save up three grand because they're now they're a millionaire? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it, the information is out there and just not many people right. know about it. They don't know where to look at. If I if I told this younger generation right now, hey, you should do an index fund. They're going to think what video right. game is that? <laughs> they're not going to understand what it is, but that's, that's crazy though. I never knew about it. All I knew is like just regular stocks trade here, trade there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's like, you see your money going down sell. You see your money going up, throw uh-huh. some more into it or whatnot, but index. Yeah, fund, check I'm it gonna, out, man. We'll, we'll talk offline that. and I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm I'll send have. you my index yeah. funds. And, and the reason why I know, I know this for Dang. a matter of a fact, <laughs> I, a matter of fact, mm-hmm. I, uh, I, when I got into the military, I started putting money away. I, my goal was, okay, I'm going to be in the military. I don't know if I'm going to do 20. You, you just don't know. So I want to make sure I don't require this right. retirement. So I'm going to work on my own retirement fund. So I started working on a Roth IRA and I started working on it. I was putting it away and I was like, man, I'm putting money into this bitch, but it's not really growing. And so I started looking into it and it had a, uh, what is it? I think a 4% return rate, which would mean it takes 12 years for that bitch to double. We're fucked. That's not good at all. Right. Double. Right. And yeah. so I had it up right. to about twenty two thousand dollars and I read the, the book Unshakable in like 2017 ish. And so I put it into a Vanguard index fund. And when I switched over to real estate, I emptied out my Roth IRA to start all this business shit, all that stuff like that. It doubled. I had over four, like forty five thousand wow. to take out and to invest. Right. Like yeah. why compound? Like I, I can I can physically say I've physically experienced compound interest. And it is fucking stupid right. because there's like it's it's sometimes you get to a point where like it's stupid we're we're able to do these things, but it's also stupid that people don't fucking know, man. Like you feel bad for some people. They don't. Um, but again, most important though, it's in a book. Are you gonna go up and, and read a book that maybe a help a self help guru does and takes the information you need? And I took that book, right? right. I read his book, fourteen ninety five from Audible, man. The, some of the greatest investments I've ever done are Audible because the uh, knowledge. Took that money. And put that in there and then took that money from my investment and went all in on an index fund and was sitting there saying, I'm hope I'm reading this information, but I have a feeling, you know, this and that, and it, and it worked out. And so that is some of the craziest things that I've experienced with when it comes to financial stuff personally, but also it's one of the ones where like no one, no one gave a fuck about my color. No one gave it my, my, my gender. No one gave a fuck about my age. No one gave anything really. No one cared about my even my financial situation. There was never a person saying, if you don't have this much, you can't do it, right? So there's that. It was that point of like, are you willing to learn? And then most importantly, are you willing to learn? But then are you willing to act on that information now? Now you're charged with understanding this stuff. I think that's the biggest, inform- the biggest, the biggest thing that people don't understand is you have to actually do something now about it. 
Right. Yeah, and I and I think you hit it right in the head. I mean, it it takes patience, and I don't think a lot yeah. of people do that. I mean, you look at now, people are even sometimes digging into their four hundred one k, just because financially they don't know how to take care of their mm. money properly. You know, so now they they're dipping into their four hundred one k. They're getting charged a fee because now you're taking things out early, and all you're doing is you're trying to recover from whatever is happening at that moment. But never once do you think, okay, once this is done. How can I get right. back on track? You just to me, I feel like people nowadays rely so much on this 401k and not think what else can I do to secure me financially in case if I ever have to deal with the 401k in case a divorce happens and the spouse is taking half of mm-hmm. your 401k or in case I got to pull out early because I need to put my kid through college or whatever the case may be. You know, the what if scenarios are always going to be there. And sometimes you have to think of the negative ones as well because they do right. impact lives on an everyday basis. But I feel like most people don't take the time to really say to themselves, I'm going to bust my ass for 25, 30 years so that way I can retire and earn this 401k. But while I'm doing that, what can I be doing else with this extra cash? Instead of going to fucking Senor Frogs on the weekend and spending $500 on fucking drinks and partying and everything else, why don't I just take this money and invest yeah. it somewhere else? It's just the knowledge is not there. It's not happening. You know, it takes, it takes for us, for people like us to cross paths for to us discussion mm-hmm. to happen. And I hope in this generation that's coming up behind us that – they are able to go into the world and hopefully come across somebody that be like, dude, have you ever thought of mm-hmm. doing this? Because I didn't learn about investments to way later on in life. You know, in the beginning was always the party scene, the social scene. You think me and my friends were talking about <laughs> fucking investing in index funds yeah. or stock? No, man. We were like, yo, when's the next shot? You know, let's, when's the next club we're going to? Where is the next party at? Never once was anything. Imagine if I was doing an index fund, like you said, I threw my little paychecks into this index fund at 18 years old. At 38, I retire. Imagine how much accumulation would have happened from 18 well, to 38. The crazier part, Who though, knows? is that's actually real stories because, like, the military has to do that now because they, they went away from the retirement. Like, these young kids have to start doing that shit. Like, that's the crazier part about a lot of things is these— did they make that? Yeah, this should happen years was ago. Was that done? So there's four one. What, whatever they or? put in is whatever they get out, and they they don't really have to stay for twenty years because there's no benefit to staying in twenty years. So yeah, but wow. if a kid's smart, he can dip in and dip out. You know what I mean? And like you might get like because of our deployments and stuff like that, you can get out and get disability, and you're good for the rest of your life. Like you can get it. You know what I mean? it's gonna come at a, at a price for sure. But there's so many different ways where you look right. at some of these kids, man. If you're like, hey man, you and you have to almost protect them and sit there and say like, hey man. You guys start putting money away right now. I know you're 18. I know like 400 bucks seems like a lot to you, but it's not. But you guys start putting some of this away, and you got to start living like a certain way because like you don't know how the ship's gonna be in 10 years. And when you get out in 10 years, what did you get from it? You literally got nothing because that's no longer here for you, right? So those are some things that I think yeah. that people need to understand that, that that's happening. <laughs> Yeah, I saw I saw a movement yeah. behind your head, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? And I see the Just cat walking chilling, around. Man. Having a great time. <laughs> Little feline. See, like, right now, like, I've been t- my my oldest niece right now, and we were going to do it um, with her when she was going through the school, was the 529s. Mm-hmm. You heard of those? They're like, a, so the 529 oh, for, yeah, 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 is like, uh, yeah, for like mm-hmm. for college and stuff like so I told my niece I was like cuz I'm familiar with that. I I've seen it other people use it before. So I told my niece I was like, "Dude, now that the baby's going to be one, like open that up and, you know, monthly invest and for her birthday instead of people buying her toys or whatever, tell them to invest and just let it build. By the time she's 18, graduated high school, her college is covered, man. Unless you're smart with investments and index funds and things like that, but if you're not willing to to take a chance to do that type mm-hmm. of investing, then at least do that. You know what I'm saying? So that way when she gets to that point where she's going off to college, who knows from one years old to 18 years old what your lives are going to be. If you're still yeah. going to be married. You know, things can happen. But at least, you know, with that 529, that's yeah. secure, that she'll be covered when she gets to that age. So she did open one up, which I'm glad. So I told her, I was like, hopefully everybody else just let them know that don't give me gifts. Just here's the link and donate to this. So that way... When my great niece gets older and she's off to college, you guys don't have to be trying to figure out how the fuck you're right. gonna pay for it. 
you know. So, but yeah, so I mean, that was one thing that I was like, man, that was a good investment. I wish I knew about that back in the days. So that way, I once I graduated high school, I could have probably used that shit to go to college. But my parents yeah. didn't know it better. You know, our parents, that investing was not even a thing back in the 90s and 80s, even though it's been around forever. But none of them were like trying to be there to, to focus on that. They were just trying to figure out how the fuck can I get a job and, and pay the, the bills, the rent and keep food on the table for these kids, you know? Because there was five of us. <laughs> so she had to make sure she had to feed all five. So, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because it's like financing is a topic that not many people talk about, you know, because one, a majority of the people probably don't even know what they're talking about anyway. So, but it's good that you said that because like I said, I, I know Robin Hood. My brother showed me Robin Hood. He showed me like how he would trade, sell, buy this. So it got me into it. So I did my research, look up these stocks, see who's the top earner, who's doing this, who's doing that. I'll read the articles to show me like, yo, Netflix is going to be dropping. So take your shit out of it. You know, I try to maintain that knowledge of seeing where my money is going into. But what is so wrong with you being able to just let your money grow hmm. for itself? You know what I'm saying? If you can let your money just sit there and grow, why not? Why not do that at all? 